Let me let me ask you about some of uh, some of Joe Biden's positions that have changed. I mentioned mm -hmm. he was against the travel ban. You know, a few months later, oh, it was a right decision. Uh, he said numerous times in some of the primary debates he was against all fracking. Uh, a lot of denial on the issue of the violence and the rioting and the anarchy in cities. At one point said police become the enemy, reallocate funds, et cetera. Um, now he's talking even about manufacturing jobs. Uh, when in his when he was vice president and Obama was president, they said those jobs ain't coming back. That's right. Why well, the flip flops? Right. Do you think I've America is going quite to buy like it? Actually, what's John, that? I've never seen anything quite like it. The travel ban. All of a sudden, he denies that. Thinks it's fine. Thinks it was good. But how about fracking? And you need that. It's basically your fossil fuels, your energies. We would have to close many of the plants, a big percentage of the plants in our country, if we didn't do this. We have these massive plants, and they're not going to run by wind, and they're not going to run by solar at this point, and maybe at no point. But we have uh, natural gas, which is really very environmentally friendly. We have all sorts of things. We're the number one in the world now in energy. We've done a great job with energy. And you look at what you're paying a price per gallon at your car. People are saying it's unbelievable. They're paying less than $2 in many cases and going down even. And they can't believe how well we've done. We don't need to be in the Middle East other than for the protection of Israel. There's no reason to be there from the standpoint of uh, oil. But we have allies, Saudi Arabia and others, that have been uh, really spend a lot of money here and treat us well. And, you know, we'll take care of a lot of our people. We have some very good allies over there. And Israel, of course, we help Israel a lot. Uh, we took out Soleimani. We took out uh, a, lot of, a lot of problems they were having over there or they would have without us. Without us, I don't think any of them would survive for very long. So, but we don't need it for energy anymore. We're energy independent. It's an incredible feeling. I guess it's the first time we've ever been, or at least for many, many decades, energy independent. And you look at the price of energy. If if Biden never got in, he was talking about no fracking very strongly. And his super liberal running mate, who's the most liberal person, more so than Bernie, rated the most liberal in all of the Senate, uh, Kamala. If you look at what she said about fracking, there won't be any fossil fuels, there won't be any fracking, and they were all disciples of AOC and AOC plus three. And uh, it's ridiculous, but uh, they constantly talk about no fracking, then all of a sudden he sees his poll numbers going down, and he sees, you know, Texas wants oil. I say they're against guns, they're against oil, and they're against religion. That doesn't do well in Texas or Pennsylvania or North Carolina or just about any other place that I can think of. And it's, a, you know, it's incredible. But they'll change in an instant and pretend like nothing ever happened. They'll say, oh, no, I'm OK with fracking. Oh, but, oh he said it the other day. Uh, Biden said it the other day. He said, no, 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 fracking is OK. We're going to uh, grandfather it. We're going to do something with it. But fracking's OK. And yet he just ran for months and months where he's fighting fracking. And she, I don't think she could possibly say it. She's been fighting a few. But the bottom line, they will go back to where they come from. Where they come from is no oil, no fracking, no drilling. Uh, religion, look what they're doing to religion. They don't let your churches open. They let a casino open, but they won't let your churches open. They'll let protesters protest in the streets without masks by the thousands, but they won't let your churches open. So. There, it's religion, it's oil, and it's guns. And those three items alone, how can anybody even run? George Washington and Abra Abraham Lincoln as a, as a combo, as a combination couldn't win. But this is what we're up against. They changed their view. But where they're going from and where they're going to is where they originally came from. And that's none of this stuff. You're not going to frack. You're not going to have energy. And our nation's going to have one of the best years it ever had next year. Last year was the best year we've ever had. Next year's going to be better. And this third quarter coming up, and the numbers are going to be out before the, before the election, those numbers are going to be fantastic. You watch. Well, the numbers were at 8.4 percent unemployment. There was some predictions early on. I, I didn't. I did not think you'd see uh, uh, the jobs come back as quickly as they did. To be be very, very frank, or the other things. Setting. Record setting, Sean. So, but early voting has started. Before the first yeah. debate, which is scheduled for September 29th, early voting is now going on. 
in states uh, around the country. You've talked a lot about that. Are you preparing yet for your upcoming debates? And if so, how so? Well, a little bit. But what I'm concerned about are all these ballots, because they're sending unsolicited ballots. It could be as many as 80 million throughout the nation. And when you have small races, like a congressional race in New York, with uh, two people where the ballots are a mess. 84,000 plus. Yeah, if the ballots are missing, they're gone, they're, there's been fraud, there's been deceit and deception. And this is just a small congressional race, Carolyn Maloney, a small congressional race. And then you look at New Jersey, what happened in Patterson, what happened in Virginia, what happened in almost every place. And these are small little races that are easy to, you would think it would be very easy, but it's, it's terrible. And now we're sending out 80 million ballots, and they're unsolicited. So when you send out an un that means people are going to get ballots that don't even know they're getting them. And that takes the enthusiasm away a little bit because we have as massive, the largest ever, they say, the difference in enthusiasm. But if people are going to start walking up to your door and saying, do you want to sign this? They'll say, I don't want to vote. Well, sign this. OK, I'll sign it. There's no enthusiasm necessary there. It's really a corrupt system. And you watch. They have a plan. And the plan is not a good plan. They look to tie it all up because... They can't control the ballots on a small congressional race and smaller races even than that. And the, now you're going to control 80 million ballots? I don't think so. Well, Attorney General Barr has warned about it. The Heritage Foundation has identified almost 1,000 convictions on the issue of voter fraud, almost 1,300 examples of voter fraud. Uh, you know, the, the election is now, anecdotally, there's been reports that Maybe your campaign is short on cash. I made some calls today. My sources say that is not the case. Uh, yeah, no. a little shy of $300 million, but I was told by a friend in Florida that, that Joe Biden has three to one ads running against yours. Is this a strategy you're waiting, or is this something that you didn't want? Maybe you're just ramping up after Labor Day. So four years ago, I won it in the last month. And we have about three times more cash now than we had then. And that's without me putting up any. If I needed extra, I'll put it up myself. I just I said that two days ago. I said if there's any necessary extra cash. But we have a lot of money coming in and small donors. I haven't been heavy on big donors because I don't want to call them. You know, when you call big donors, you, you sort of put yourself in a very compromising position. When somebody puts up a lot of money, you're in a compromised position. Whether you say it, whether you don't say it, it doesn't matter. And what I like are the small donors. But, no, we have substantially more, two to three times more than we had four years ago at this time. And four years ago, we won. But if we needed any more, if I saw that we were going to need more, I would put it up myself. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. President, we have an election in — we have less than 20 seconds for you. An election in just 55 days, 20 seconds, what this means to you, this election, and what does it mean to the country? If and when we win, we're going to have the greatest economy in the history of our country. It'll be next year, and you will see numbers like you, you have never seen with tax cuts and regulation cuts further. Already done the biggest tax cut in history, but we're going to do a great job, and we're going to keep our military and our vets very, very happy. Mr. President from the White House tonight, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.